Hey, this is Sarah Palin up in Alaska, and I am the first one to admit when I make a mistake. I admit that I made a mistake some years ago not supporting Julian Assange, thinking that uh, he was a bad guy, that um, he leaked material that perhaps he shouldn't, and I've learned a lot since then. And I think Julian did the right thing, and Julian... Um, did us all a favor in America, did the world a favor by fighting for what he believed was right. And ultimately, he's been proven to be right. He deserves a pardon. Um, he deserves all of us to understand more about what he has done uh, in the name of real journalism. And that's uh, getting to the bottom of issues that the public really needs to hear about and benefit from. Uh, yeah, some years ago, I publicly spoke out against Julian and I, I made a mistake. I, I, like I say, I've learned a lot since then. Um, he, I know that it's coming down to the wire and whether he's going to be pardoned or not. I want more Americans to speak out on his behalf and to understand what it is that he has done and what has been done to him as he was working on the people's behalf to allow information um, to get to us so that we could make up our minds about different issues, about different people. He did the right thing. Um, I support him. And I hope that more and more people, especially as it comes down to the wire, will speak up in support of pardoning Julian. Um, God bless him. Welcome, huge and amazing folks, to a brand new Awakening, the Honor Against Souls episode. Today, uh, as always, your host, Alex Martinez. It's great to see you here. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Today's episode will be the last before Christmas. And I'll be taking some holidays, actually. I'll be coming back on January the 11th. But with some news and with more stories to tell. Meanwhile, we have Moderna becoming the second COVID vaccine to receive US approval. So this was exactly one week after the FDA granted an emergency use authorization for the Pfizer uh, COVID vaccine. It was late on Friday that there are now two. So after Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine was also officially declared by the FDA, which issued an emergency use authorization for the Moderna vaccine to be distributed across the US. So we have Moderna on Twitter saying, we just announced that the FDA has authorized the Moderna COVID vaccine in the US for emergency use to prevent COVID-19 in individuals 18 or and over. The Moderna COVID-19 vaccine hasn't been approved or licensed by the FDA. So, these are great news depending on who you ask. Definitely because you have people claiming that the vaccine doesn't work. Pfizer, Moderna and so on. They simply say they don't work because of the new technology and how it hasn't been proven to be effective nor uh, with long-term stability when it comes to the side effects. So this is definitely something to take into consideration and we should always bear in mind and how there have been simply some uh, claims by doctors and they're being silenced or simply censored. And we have people uh, fainting nurses fainting. We'll later talk about this. So the FDA's decision to authorize the shot among adults means that two of the six vaccines candidates identified with the Operation Warp Speed are now available to the public. A remarkable feat accomplished in less than one year with the anti-Trump experts, bowing this could never possibly happen. So meanwhile in Tennessee, uh, as I just said, we have a nurse passing out on camera minutes after taking COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, ridiculous. I mean, um, there's always two sides to the same story. In this case, uh, the official story says that this nurse had some difficulties when it comes to um, handling uh, pain and needles. And that's why she often fainted and she had a history in which she would just faint, but um, many people think this official narrative has been just made up for them to cover the reality of how the COVID vaccine had 
the side effect of making the nurse pass out. So it was a critical care nurse, Tiffany Dover, at CHI Memorial Hospital in Chattanooga, was having a lucid discussion with uh, a, a TV channel following her vaccination, and when she came visibly impaired, holding her hand to her head and swaying. She then apologized to the news crew, turned away from the camera, and fainted. So, 10 minutes after the shot, Dover became lightheaded and passed out while speaking with us, the outlet reported. We can see the video and how she was simply talking, and then she starts to feel a bit bad, and she starts, in a way, saying he, she's just having some issues, and then she suddenly turns and faints. Um, I mean, it's a nurse. So, some people say there's a vagal response, and of course when the vagus nerve is stimulated, setting off a chain of events within the body involving the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and the cardiovascular system. Uh, the rest of the vaccinations, vaccinations sorry, reported uh, went off without a hitch after the hospital received 175 doses. So uh, with the last thing I've just said regarding the vagal response, it is known that there are a variety of triggers that can set off a vagal response, and some of them are internal, meanwhile others are from the same environment. So we have emotional stress, blood being drawn uh, or the sight of blood. So, you know, there's some people that just faint when they see blood coming out. We also have fear, gastrointestinal illnesses, having a bowel movement, heat, pain, standing up for a long time, standing up quickly and trauma. So these are not new. We know about this and it's just simple to detect and to avoid. So in this case, the nurse must have had one of these reactions, according to the official narrative, always. And we also have some other um, examples of how you just can faint when you've done a lot of exercise, so post-exercise basal syncope, and many other occasions. But this is not the only case in which we've seen this. We also have Chicago Area Hospital to resume vaccination after four workers experienced adverse reaction. So three of the employees were recovering well at home while the fourth was continuing to receive medical attention. This is reported by Fox News and it quotes, A hospital north of Chicago says it plans to resume coronavirus vaccinations for its staff Sunday, following a temporary pause after four employees experienced adverse reactions to the Pfizer treatment. The employees' symptoms included a tingling and elevated heart rates. Fox 32 of Chicago reported Friday after the shots were administered a day earlier. Three of the employees were recovering well at home while the fourth was continuing to receive medical attention, the reporter said. So, the facility said its decision to resume was approved by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, and prevention as uh, as well as local health officials, as always. Um, not new. But uh, we have to know there's been things going on. And with regards to the vaccine, hopefully we'll get it rolling in the next months. Uh, both Trump and Joe Biden are looking forward to it. So we'll see what happens with the different technologies and with the different uh, big pharma companies which are pushing this uh, vaccine and vaccination program. Just being, I have to say, pretty damn good when it comes to uh, the support that has been received and given by the media, mainstream media always. So they're basically telling you how good the vaccination is and how effective it is and how perfect it is. So uh, if this is just uh, my own opinion, right? Um, if if the vaccine was so good as as it basically as they basically claim then it would simply just sell itself, I believe. And there would be no need for anyone to to just call out and say, well, this is really good, you have to take this, etc. So, just a, a simple thought. And also, we have the Pentagon 
making voluntarily for uh, troops, American troops, to vaccinate and to basically take the shot. So this may change over time, but for the moment, that's how it is. And the, Donald Trump has also avoided uh, White House officials to take the vaccine as, you know, it's just speculation, but it may seem that it can have some side effects. So maybe they don't want those important people to have those side effects from the vaccine. So maybe that can um, be the cause of these decisions. And you've heard it on the beginning of the episode. That uh, that so-called Sarah Palin, which uh, has published a video on YouTube, which was the one that you just posted and you've just heard. And she's calling uh, for Julian Assange to be pardoned. So if you don't know who Sarah Palin is, she was a WikiLeaks victim back when all this WikiLeaks stuff uh, just exploded. And she's now saying that Julian Assange should be pardoned by Donald Trump, which is quite uh, an impressive thing to just say, bearing in mind she was a victim, right? And she is quite confident, and I really respect her for this decision, as she has demonstrated the capability of just recognizing her own mistakes. So Julian Assange has now a new defender in a way. And she said, quote, I am the first one to admit when I make a mistake. And Sarah Paulin was a former Alaska governor. And this video was posted on to YouTube on Saturday. So WikiLeaks, the website run um, by Julian Assange, uh, ran to disseminate Portland data Posted family photos, private messages, and government emails hacked from Palin's Yahoo.com account in 2008, weeks after uh, Senator John McCain named her as his vice presidential running mate. So um, she says um, she has learned a lot since then and that she deserves a pardon. And Assange, uh, Julian Assange, definitely has fought for what was true and what he standed up for and he's now imprisoned and Donald Trump has the ability to pardon him if he wishes, which according to some uh, sources, Donald Trump would be looking forward to pardoning uh, Julian Assange, but maybe we have some other people pushing back against this decision. So the conservative favorite went on to praise Assange for what he has done in the name of real journalism, and that's getting to the bottom of issues that the public really needs to hear about and benefit from. That's how it is. That's how it is. It's a 180 degree turnaround from the Republican stance of 12 years ago, when the uh, GOP's stalwarts will fight Assange for what they saw as a dirty campaign trick. So many people just defend and think that Julian Assange shouldn't be pardoned because of what he leaked and of the sensitive information he basically gave away. But we have to remember the sensitive information always has a double side. And this would be like just not posting or not leaking Hunter Biden's videos. These things must be known by the general public. I mean, it's not a, a, a national security threat. It's not something we should, oh, we should maybe classify. This stuff, this sort of things, are definitely have to be, and they have to be known by everyone. Because it can really change how you think about people and how you believe or basically think about the different sides of the same story. So, Tucker Carlson also talked and makes appeal to Trump for a sense of pardon. So we've we just talked about this uh, during the show and his weekly Fox News channel. Uh, Tucker Carlson urged President Trump to pardon Julian Assange, saying that while the president probably does want to pardon the WikiLeaks founder, who remains in detention awaiting an extradition trial in London, 
There are also sinister people who want to him who want him, sorry, to stay confined for life. This is what I've just said. And this can be seen also in on YouTube, uh, Tucker Carlson saying he wants Julian Assange to be pardoned by Donald Trump. Uh, moving along, we have um, the Vice News reporting uh, breaking news on December the 17th, with the French police having arrested and are now questioning Jean-Luc Brunel, the voice of modeling agency suspected of supplying underage girls to Jeffrey Epstein, source of the Guardian. So, uh, apparently now, December the 20th, uh, the French investigators confirmed they want to interview Prince Andrew following the arrest of Jean-Luc Brunel on the Daily, Daily Mail. So, Prince Andrew must be really nervous right now because of the situation he's been, um, you know, entering at this moment. So, just we just have to wait to see what happens. But um, Jean-Luc Brunel, uh, who was a French modeling agent, had connections to Jeffrey Epstein charged with rape. Obviously, Jeffrey Epstein, we don't have to talk about him. We all know who he is. In case you don't know, he is now dead. Apparently, he committed suicide. The reality is that he was killed by someone who was murdered. So, um, because of the connections and ties he had with the elite and of the secrets, he basically held. And his let's say, not wife, but uh, mate Ghislaine Maxwell is now in prison uh, awaiting trial next year, so the charges against Jean-Luc Brunel are part of a French investigation, investigation into alleged sexual exploitation by Epstein and his circle. So, he is 74 and was arrested at Charles de Gaulle Airport on Wednesday and he, as he awaited to take a flight to Senegal and has been remained in custody. He has been investigated as part of French inquiry into the alleged sexual exploitation of women and girls by Epstein and his circle. And although the Paris prosecutor said Brunel was suspected of having raped, assaulted and harassed several minor and adult victims as well as organizing transport and hosting young women for Epstein. Despite this being the case, the modeling agent didn't re didn't receive didn't receive any human trafficking charges. One of the main lines of inquiry, because a magistrate decided there was insufficient evidence. And we have another um new being reported by Sky News, which is a bit disturbing. I have to say, you know, just <laughs> Chris, it was just a, a fun fact. Well, not fun, but. We have uh, Sky News saying that John Blood has an elixir that prevents AIDS-related diseases. This is what a study has re revealed. So, blood factors obtained from junk beings can improve late life health in animals and put an end to AIDS-related diseases. If we reach to the point in which this headline isn't disturbing, then we might have a problem. because. I just think this is crazy and how they're basically just speaking about this. And this is the part of a different, I don't know if you call them conspiracies, because, you know. But it is said that the elite often drink and take blood from young people, from kids. And, you know, this headline really ties with that narrative. Which is a bit disturbing once again. And moving on with the vaccines once again, we have the World Health Organization finally, finally admitting PCR tests create false positives. And this is on December the uh, it was on December the fourteenth when they said this on a two minute article being published by them, uh, which is uh, a bit. Once again, uh, incredible, given the fact that we've been having this pandemic since last year, on December, January 2019, or 2000, January 2020. So, this is ridiculous on how they're reporting right now. Maybe there's a, an answer to why they're telling us that RT-PCR tests are now given 
giving false positives and we may answer that question later on. For the moment, I'll just read what we have by the World Health Organization and they say, the World Health Organization has received user feedback on an elevated risk for false SARS-CoV-2 results which testing when testing specimens using RT-PCR reagents on open systems. So, as with we've we've talked about this on the first episode of the of the podcast with RT-PCR tests and the case dynamic. So, my, you might want to check that episode out in case you have missed it, because it really shed light sheds light on how uh, these tests work, and you may find it interesting. Either way, um, as with any diagnostic procedure, the positive and negative protective values for the product in a given testing population are important to note. As the positivity rate for SARS-CoV-2 decreases, the positive protective value also decreases. This means that the probability that a person who has a positive result, SARS-CoV-2 detected, is truly infected with SARS-CoV-2 decreases as positive rate decreases, irrespective of the assay specificity. So therefore, healthcare providers are encouraged to take into consideration testing results along with clinical signs and symptoms, confirmed status of any contact, etc. So this is basically saying that users of RT-PCR reagents should read the IFU carefully to determine if manual adjustment of the PCR positivity threshold is necessary to account for any background noise which may lead to a specimen with a high cycle threshold CT, which is the CT value we also covered on that episode, uh, of the CT value result being interpreted as a positive result. The design principle of the RT-PCR means that for patients with high levels of circulating virus viral load, relatively few cycles will be needed to detect the virus and so the CT value will be low. Conversely, when specimens uh, return a high CT value, it means that many cycles were required to detect the virus. In some circumstances, the distinction between background noise and the actual presence of the target virus is difficult to ascertain. And that's the important statement to remind here. Thus, the IFU will state how to interpret specimens at or near the limit for PCR positivity. In some cases, the I view will state that the cutoff should be manually adjusted to ensure that specimens with high CT values are not incorrectly assigned SARS-CoV-2 detected due to background noise. So this is basically what's been happening all the way through this month, all of the of this month of the so-called casemic, where we had plenty of people given positive and they may not be infected. Well, they might be infected, they might not be. Um, infectious, which is different, and they may have simple as a f- very small quantity of viral load, which was detected by a CT value of around 40, would have to say it's incredibly high. So we we'll have labs and different people performing those tests with giving uh, high CT values such as 35 or 40s, which basically turns into uh, giving false positives. So they're basically saying they should now control the threshold in order to avoid giving false positives. We may have to uh, consider giving a 25 CT value or maybe 30 at its most. So this has been said by the, by the World Health Organization. And maybe the question here is why are they saying this now, right now, instead of, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we used the RT-PCR tests? Well, this is the question that we should always be uh, trying to answer. And we have to consider this, that the RT-PCR tests, which uh, by its own um, creator or scientist, you, you, I mean, as you wish, he said that with these kind of, this sort of tests, you could basically detect anything on the human body if done correctly. So this means that this is not a a COVID test only. This is just a simple uh, polymerase chain reaction test, which uh, in a way looks for what is being told to look. 
and depending on that CT value, then results will be positive or negative. Simple as that. So maybe we have these uh, the the World Health Organization reporting about this right now because of the vaccine and the vaccination program. We might find that due to this new uh, we can say law, not law, but instructions on how to use the RT-PCR tests, we may find that those the number of positives is now will now be uh, going down, and maybe in the next months will just start to decrease. And we may find that there's a relation between the number of people taking vaccines and then the number of people being infected going also down. So maybe there's a a, a mind trick there to try to, well, say how effective is that vaccine that is actually making COVID positives go down, which it may not be the case and the cause of of those actual um, decreases, but it may be how we read those RT-PCR tests. So just want to throw that out to you guys and just for uh, the last part of the episode, we have known that the Space Force personnel will be called Guardians, maybe of the galaxy, who knows. But it's been a year since um, President Donald Trump signed the National Defense Authorization Act to create the military's newest and sixth brand, which was the Space Force. So the people took it as a somewhat of a joke when Trump first announced it. But since then, it's been very real with lots of developments. Maybe not reported by the mainstream media, but there's been plenty of developments. So there were attempts uh, to remain dominant in Spain's in space amid a rising China and Russia. So uh, with this last um, report, we have the army has soldiers, the navy has sailors, the marines have marines, and the coast guard has coast guardians men. And as of Friday, now the space force has guardians. <laughs> It's pretty nice. And we have the first radio signals from planet outside solar system could have been received. This is what astronomers are saying as of Saturday uh, 19th of December. I mean, this is just interesting to know. And I'll just finish by reading some of this article, which says the astronomers might have received the first radio signals from a planet outside our solar system. And the breakthrough, according to the scientists who found it, could have paved the way for important new means of examining and understanding far-flung planetary bodies. This is this news is the latest in otherworldly stories reported this year relating to UFOs and little green men. <laughs> that they aren't the more memorable stories from these years ago to show how bizarre the 2020 news cycle has been. Definitely. It's been like this. Hopefully, we'll get new and more interesting year on 2021. And I'll be reporting on that too. So with today's episode, we give an end and put an end to season one of Awakening the Unawakened Show. Thank you everyone for tuning in, in with us. We've had a record number of five, more than 500, even reaching the 700 uh, place. And so I'm really grateful for that, for your support and how you've been listening to every single one of our episodes every Monday at 9 a.m. for the time. So once again, thank you, folks. I'll be coming back on January the 11th of 2021 with more news, more reports, and hopefully a better year. That being said, Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a nice... Um, have nice holidays and this is your host signing off.